Hey guys, and welcome to another Titan Tries. This time, we're going to be taking a look at the relatively recently released Luigi's Mansion 2, or Dark Moon, as it was once called before this HD remake. Uh, this is my in-progress save, at the time anyway. And I've got some thoughts about this one. Uh, as a big fan of the original game, I was kind of excited to finally try this because it was originally released uh, in 2012, I believe, for the 3DS. However, uh, I missed out on it. I never got round to it. I always wanted to play it, but it just passed me by. So, fast forward to <laughs> uh, June, I believe, this year, and... Lo and behold, the game came out on the Switch. And it is quite visually enhanced compared to the original release. So, compared to the first game, this one is certainly extremely different uh, with how the game is actually put together. In the first game, you essentially was playing as Luigi, Mario had gone missing, and you were thrown into this rather large mansion. And you could more or less explore at your leisure, obviously, with kind of like a Resident Evil sort of system where you have to explore the rooms, find keys, which uh, allow you to progress into further areas. This game... <sighs> This one is not like that at all. This one is broken down into levels, missions, and mansions. That's right, mansions. There are five mansions, I believe, to explore. But unlike the first game, you don't have free roam. You can explore a collection of rooms and then EGAD will pull you back for a chat. And I think my biggest problem with this game actually is Professor EGAD. He will constantly interrupt you. you. You never really feel like you're off the hook and you can just explore and have fun like you could in the original game. Now, there are some other um, interesting additions. We can get upgrades now. Our Poltergust 5000 has been massively enhanced and we can get five levels of upgrades of our equipment, which is pretty cool, to be fair. Visually, this game is stunning. It's absolutely gorgeous. I'm looking forward to playing the third game. There's quite a lot of things to find. As we can see there, we have a gem collection on each mansion. Uh, I just can't get over the fact how... At least, I've only, uh, at the time of recording this, I've only completed the first mansion, and I have just started probably about halfway through the second mansion. But from what I, could, what I have discovered so far is the mansions are very, very, very small. I'm assuming they're going to open up and get bigger as we uh, go further in. Collecting treasure is important. That is how we are one of the reasons we're ranked anyway and uh, collecting treasure works towards our upgrades now we have some extra tools uh, we have a black light filter which will show hidden objects which is a rather neat mechanic we have our flashlight which we can use to stun the ghosts and the ghosts are a little bit more devious this time around we also have our poltergust 5,000, which we can uh, <laughs> suck ghosts up, you know, Ghostbusters style, and that works pretty well. One of the other things that I think is a little bit of a drawback of this game um, are the controls. This game is very slow and very heavy to control. It's not bad, but it can get a little bit fiddly, especially when, for instance, you are trying to suck up and hoover up a ghost as soon as you pull down the trigger to engage the vacuum, you are suddenly locked 
into the position that you're facing and it kind of changes the controls you can get used to it but yeah it, it it's iffy so uh, another mechanic in this game is the golden bones on each chapter uh, or should I say on each level there is a golden bone to find and that actually gives you an extra life it took me a while to realize what they were for um, so there's only one and it will appear after you've already collected 200 treasure now if you don't die and you keep the golden bone that actually will get converted into an extra 200 treasure so it sounds like I've been awfully negative on this game so far and I think that was because of my uh, expectations of the first game. The first game was fantastic. But that's not to say that this one isn't fun. This one is fun. And I've been having a rather good time with it. There's a lot more to learn in this game. And as you can see by the animations and everything, it is rather nice. Constant interruptions by Professor Egad are probably the biggest issue with this game. Now also, uh, one of the strengths of this game, because everything is broken down into short missions, you can replay the missions and you can get better ranks and find hidden uh, items and hidden ghosts and things. Whereas obviously in the original game, if you wanted to replay a certain section, you had to go back through and play the entire game over again. So I'm guessing for a handheld sort of uh, experience, it sort of makes sense, and it was an interesting idea, but personally, I don't think it worked out that well. So this was actually made by Next Level Games. Uh, it is a company that was founded in 2002. Uh, it used to work on all platforms, but in 2014, it decided to go uh, and primarily, or pretty much only work with Nintendo until I believe it was about 2018 somewhere around there nintendo actually bought them out now there's lots of cool little things that you can do in this game like you can look through uh, windows and you can see the ghosts playing and generally being asses which is quite fun in fact there's a hell of a lot of character in this game they really have brought the ghosts to life and it does show and the levels carrying on the tradition of the original game are incredibly detailed there is that they're just a hell of a lot of fun to explore such rich details and we've got these nice little outdoor areas now these mice that run around um they kind of trip you up they're kind of annoying because they will hurt you taking damage in this game is bad by the way uh, but if you kill them with your flashlight, you will get a singular coin. Sometimes you'll get a heart from them as well. And there is another gem up in that tree that the, uh, the, the ghost dog was playing with. We've already got it. That's why it's clear. Now, I was hoping for something, um, maybe like a big load of treasure or something, when we collected all of the gems. Because each mansion has its own set of gems. But nothing seems to happen. Whether something's going to happen later on down the line when we collect everything, I'm not sure. Now you can harvest and vacuum up pretty much any piece of material you can find. And the environment does feel a little bit more interactive than it did in the original game. But obviously uh, we are lacking that consistency. So... The story for this game is a little bit different to the first game. In the first game, we played as Luigi, as we do here, except Luigi had won a mansion. A mansion from a competition that he never um, entered, which was rather suspect. In this game, Luigi is just chilling out, having a good time, having a snooze in front of the TV, and then all of a sudden, he is summoned by his old pal, Professor Egad. Because something has gone horribly wrong. You see, Egad was working with the friendly ghosts uh, after the first game. They were helping him invent things. But suddenly, a mysterious object in the sky called the Dark Moon was destroyed and fractured into five pieces. And on fracturing, the 
uh, ghosts all decided to go mental and become hostile. So that is when Egad summons our friend Luigi and outfits him once again with a poltergust and sends him on his merry way to try and retake the mansions and find out what's going on. You can bet your bottom dollar that there is a rather large King Boo size villain at the end of this game. I can't say for sure because I haven't got to the end game yet, but it seems pretty obvious that that's what's going on. Now, we have our dual scream this time, our DS, instead of the Game Boy Horror in the first game, which again is a really nice nod. I like the way we have a dual scream instead of a uh, Game Boy Horror. Now, you will kind of see it a little bit in this game, just how often Professor Egad interrupts you. It gets to the point where it feels like we're playing Metal Gear Solid, you know, with a constant codec um, or codex interruptions. Yeah, they were really obnoxious in Metal Gear Solid. Uh, and it's probably not quite that extreme, but it's bad enough. So once you complete the overarching, uh, or the main goal for a mansion uh, or a level, Professor Egad will snap you back and that ends the mansion. The problem with this is it can happen rather suddenly. So unless you know uh, the layout of the mission, they can abruptly end uh, without you um, getting to explore as much as you would like. You can see the uh, personality of some of the ghosts here. And they do have cool personalities. These guys remind me of Slimer from Ghostbusters. And I think that's one thing you can say about the Luigi's Mansion uh, series so far, anyway, is <laughs> Nintendo made the best Ghostbusters game franchise, literally. They are ridiculously good fun. Now, what you'll notice is every time you come back through a mission, and I believe there's five missions for each mansion, uh, each time there will be more places you can explore. And of course, you can go back through the old rooms as well. But so far, there seems little point in doing so. And one of the first objectives here, after you got your poltergust, is to get the bulb. This green bulb, which we've already got because I've already completed this uh, level, will allow us to unlock doors. Certain doors require keys. Certain doors require you to flash them with a green bulb. And not only doors, there are extra objects in the environment that you can manipulate. Yeah, incoming message from Gad. Yeah, you'll, you'll learn to uh, hate that, that tune going off. Now, one good thing is you can actually skip these. Once you've seen these and you know what he's going to say, you can skip them. Now, exploring the environment is kind of important as well if you want to get all of the treasure. And as we said before, collecting treasure is important because that's how you get your upgrades. However, there's only five upgrades. Now, this is one of the doors that requires the flash bulb to get through now the mansion is incredibly detailed like I said and there are some surprising secrets like if you vacuum certain items or certain things light fittings for instance ceiling fans you can actually activate some pretty cool <laughs> uh, secret places vacuuming off wallpaper and things like that including finding entire secret rooms now, unfortunately, if you're not careful, um, once discovering some treasure, if you don't hoover it up pretty quick, it will disappear, which I'm not a fan of. I don't like that. It's interesting that it took 11 and a half years between the first game and the second game. I'm not sure why. Now, when Luigi's Mansion 1 came out, uh, it, it wasn't exactly praised at the time. I remember a lot of people were very, very disappointed that it wasn't a traditional Mario game. And I think that's unfair 
because Luigi's Mansion 1 was such a incredible launch game. Yeah, it was short, and I guess it did lack a little bit of replay value, but man, what a game it was. I think that sums up the GameCube pretty well, to be fair. It had a odd library, shall we say, of very unique games. I mean, we got Metroid Prime, which I'm not the biggest fan of the Metroid Prime series. Uh, maybe I just need to play them more. We got Pikmin, which is incredible. We got Beautiful Joe. We got Luigi's Mansion. And we got possibly one of my favorite Mario games of all time. We got Mario Sunshine, which lots of people hate that game. But I have just some extreme nostalgia for that one. So, um, Next Level Games is actually a very interesting developer. Uh, they made some rather surprising games, including The Suffering, which we've already covered on this channel. Now, if you capture more than three ghosts, actually, I think you can only capture three ghosts at once. That's the max you can get on the hook. Uh, you can really get extra cash for that. And as you can see, Egad just will not leave us alone. So yeah, uh, Next Level Games, they made uh, The Suffering back in 2004. They did Super Mario Strikers for the GameCube. Uh, they did some Spider-Man games. They did Ticket to Ride, which is a game that pops out at me. They did Transformers, Cybertron Adventures, Tom Clancy's Ghost Recon. Uh, they did Microsoft Solitaire Collection. Um, and then, yeah, uh, other notable game that they did. Uh, Metroid Prime Federation Force. Anybody remember that? Probably one of the most disappointing, gut-punching uh, game reveals ever. So, um, to get the best score in this game, so you get bronze, silver, and gold. And getting gold is actually really difficult. It all depends on how quickly you get through the level. It depends on how much treasure you find and how much damage you take and how many ghosts you suck up. So trying to balance all of that stuff is very difficult. Now, as you can see, we get an upgrade here. And that gives us the level three vacuum bar, which allows us to do more damage and extract more gold from ghosts. Very useful stuff. Level three is the maximum, I believe. So now we've kind of showed off the first level, and you can see the dark moon in the background there. We found two pieces of it so far. So now I've shown off the first level, I'll um, give you a demo of the boss. I'll show off the first boss in the game, which when I first started playing, um, first run against it, it was really quite challenging. Uh, but like, like with anything, you know, once you know what you're doing, it gets significantly easier. Now, on every standard level, there's also a boo to find, and the boos are pretty well hidden. Uh, if you unlock all of the boos on a mission, you then kind of get a free roam mission, uh, a secret mission unlocks, and that is where you're timed, and you have to go around and harvest up all of the ghosts, where Egad will be constantly on the blower, telling you which room to go into next. Probably one of the better levels if you want to go around and find all the gems, because as far as I can understand, the entire level is open to you then. But like I said, the first time I uh, had to fight the ghost, it was... Oh, or fight the boss, first boss. It was really difficult, and I kind of got body bagged pretty hardcore. But once I'd realized what I was doing, I worked out some tactics. He's not that bad, which is fairly standard, to be honest. That's generally how these things work. Also, being pixelized like that looks like a really unpleasant experience, <laughs> being teleported around. Uh, and... Mr. Egad does tell us in the beginning of the game how uh, it's experimental. And up to the point where he starts sending Luigi around, it hasn't worked out very well, <laughs> which is fun. So, 
next level was actually a Canadian developer, which I thought was quite interesting as well. Based in Vancouver. Yeah, founded in October 2002. Very interesting. So we did get some quality of life improvements on this game. Um, I'm not 100% sure what they are because I never played the original. But I'm assuming there are some, as it was one of the bullet points. Uh, they did change the lettering for when you get killed, or knocked out, I should say. It no longer says game over. It says good night, which is in line with what it said in the original game. Be fair. Uh -oh. Hello. So they've also changed some of the booze names, which is interesting. Very interesting. I don't know why. I don't know whether that comes down to localization. So anyway, here we go. This is the first boss. Now, one thing I do like, see these pictures in the background that have uh, images of coins and keys and things like that. If you shine your black light onto those, they will actually uh, materialize into items that you can pick up, which is a really cool little touch. Now, the visuals are kind of, kind of a mixed bag. I don't think the actual vacuum animation is as good as it was in the original game. You know, the dust particles and things like that, they really were unbelievably good in the first one. But whether that's because this is just like a HD upgrade of the uh, 3DS game, I'd imagine there were some limitations to that. However, they have humongously improved the visuals of this game. It is a proper remake ground up these spiders are kind of annoying they're a little bit like the mice that we see running around whereas if we flash them sometimes they'll turn into coins and sometimes health although not here because i'm assuming it's a boss level now there's some puzzles here this boss is very puzzly and i don't mind that because it's fun it doesn't feel gimmicky it doesn't feel obnoxious or you know complex it is something that's quite cool and it fits in with the rest of the game so before we go too crazy let's hoover off as much stuff as we can and there she is I hope you don't have arachnophobia that's all I can say also the way it sounds it sounds very metallic she does a hell of a lot of damage to us. It's really nasty. But if we give her a flash, she'll hide her eyes. And then we have to burn her web. A little bit extreme, but she's giving us very little choice here. She'll also spit this weird poison ball at us, which very rarely does any damage, I'll be honest. But what's this? Inside the spider, there's a ghost with infinite health. Yeah, that's right. This spider has been possessed. <laughs> and we have to go a few rounds with this ghost. Each time we strip away a layer of his, I don't know, ghostly onesie, I guess. As you can see, the animation work for a what is essentially a 3DS game is fantastic. Now, I know one of the quality of life upgrades that they actually uh, brought into this game is they've made it compatible with a dual stick setup. Obviously, right? But I'm not really sure how this game would have controlled on the DS, to be honest, on 3DS. Now, one thing that I have a problem with, and I don't know if it's just me, but there are certain things in the environments, like what we have here, where we have to manipulate for instance, uh, the spinny jig on a fan. Uh, I find it very difficult to get the depth right. They, they're a little bit odd. I don't know why. I don't know whether that's one of the things that was made easier with the 3D effects on the 3DS. Uh, because I don't believe I had that problem in the original one. But it is a little bit difficult sometimes to see whether you're actually hitting the object. Right, well, as you can see, we have dis we have made another knight step out. We can actually use his halberd 
to secure the web, which was quite fun. It was quite a cool little mechanic here. Now we can use the spinny majig to burn the web, and if he's going to actually play ball with me, set that one on fire as well. And then our spider friend is going to have a bad time. All right, let's peel away another layer of this guy. There we go. Beautiful. He's gone from white to orange to red. Uh, he's looking a little bit worse for himself now. Now, I made a bit of an error here. <laughs> I should have just run. You will get caught on the environment as well. That's one thing that, that kind of bothers me a little bit. Like getting around these barrels and things. Uh, you kind of get stuck on them. Which, you know, plenty of games have that problem. But it does seem to be quite bad here. Especially when you're in a hurry. You're trying to actually run away from enemies. Now, I couldn't find a golden bone on this level. So I don't know if there just isn't golden bones on boss levels. I'm not entirely sure. All right, let's go pick up this glob of web and set fire to it. Because when in doubt, set fire to things. Now, when you have um, an item like this on the vacuum, uh, the controls become even slower and more sluggish than they were before. I don't know why, because you know, we literally just have a blob of something stuck on the end of our vacuum. But yeah, it radically changes the controls, makes it a lot harder to control, and makes Luigi much slower and sluggier. It, yeah, I don't know. I'm not going to sit here and try and work out why that's the case, but it is. Anyway, now we have got another knight flailing a burning torch we can use that to set fire uh, okay <laughs> that spider is not cooperating at all that's fine but yeah i think one of my two criticisms of this game um so far is egad and the level structure just it's well i suppose the level structure isn't as bad as i'm making it out but professor egad is really obnoxiously annoying in this game uh, they really did go overboard with it and the controls I would say the controls are not the worst I've ever played you know uh, you can certainly get used to it but everything you do in this game just feels very very slow and it's one of those things where it's kind of difficult to explain unless you've played it but the whole game just feels slow and sluggy and clunky and just not very well refined. And there goes the first boss. And he yields a nice piece of the dark moon. Now I did go back through and start searching some of the props in the environment because that's how you find the gold bones once you go over 200 coins you then search the environment and usually you'll find it pretty quick but yeah it just looks like there isn't a gold bone here which is fine not the end of the world but maybe if I suck up some of these webs there will be one in the web but there isn't. <laughs> That's just silly talk. Well done, Luigi. You're one step closer to becoming a man. And our spider has become more friendly and shrunk down. Not really sure why. <laughs> but hey, that's fine. As long as she's not trying to bite us with poisonous fangs, it's all good. And then, of course, straight away, phone call from Egad to pull us straight back in. I'm not really a fan of the way um, our DS actually starts vibrating either. And we have to push A to pull it out to initiate the conversation. That would have been fine if we could continue. 
and carry on whilst it was ringing, but you can't. It locks you into this animation. So pushing A to pull it out and start the conversation just seems utterly redundant. And again, it's just another thing that just makes the game feel slower and clunkier. Especially when you have to start going up and down um, elevators and things like that. Just the animation work is painfully slow. Now this wouldn't be a problem if you if the game was all in one shot, but because you have to continuously repeat a lot of these things, it does make the game feel way, way more frustrating than it should be. The gameplay loop. And there we have our friend Egad is excited again. Now Egad's supposed to be an old man, but I just don't get that. <laughs> I don't get that from his character. I know he's got a wisp of grey hair and one tooth, but yeah, I always thought his character design was pretty weird. He kind of looks like someone from Pikmin, to be honest. Now Egad does have a vault underneath which is um, a pretty interesting place. We can go down and we can take a look at all the treasure that we have found and all of the ghosts that we have harvested. So I guess we can go have a quick look at that. Obviously, Luigi is getting frustrated that there is a whole load of other mansions that he must explore. Now, I do like this. When we get the piece of the dark moon, we have to polish it up, get that icky dark energy off it. Stick it on this record player and polish it up with these polishing cloths or polishing brushes, I should say. Something about that is so, so satisfying. And that will clear some more of the mist or fog and open up another mansion. The mansion that I'm currently in, actually. <laughs> I do like the way Luigi just, he's so unsure of himself. He's such a coward. You would have thought after the first game, really, that he would have brave, you know, got a little bit braver, but nope. What I do wish would have done with this, I really wish they had made this a collection. For the price that they were asking, which is a, this is a full price game, by the way. This, this version is actually more expensive than it was when it originally came out on the 3DS. Now, personally, I think what they should have done is made this a double pack. They should have bundled in the first game as well. Because this is another thing that's really frustrating with Nintendo. Now, on the Switch, you can get the second game and the third game, but you don't have access to the first game, which is really silly. But who knows? Maybe the Switch 2. Maybe we shall finally get the first game on that. But then, will we be able to play 2 and 3 on it? Who knows? And this isn't the first time they've done some nonsense like that either. Now, there is another Switch game that they've recently brought back. I'm trying to think what, what it was now. <sighs> Where you can get most of the series on the Switch, but it's not all on the Switch. I know one of the things that bothers me is we have Metroid Prime, the remaster of that, which is actually a very, very good remaster. But we don't have Metroid Prime 2 or 3. Very frustrating. I think that's my biggest problem with Nintendo when they do these remasters. They either half ass it or they're incredibly slow. And that's another thing. Metroid Prime remasters are wasn't even a full price game but this is and then we had the Pikmin 1 and 2 collection which was both of the games on one cartridge for not full price it was like I think it was 30 pounds something like that they are 
probably one of the most inconsistent companies when it comes to remasters and remakes. Kind of strange. That's why I have a very... <sighs> My... Mm, what I think about Nintendo is... I think I tolerate Nintendo. I... As a company, I really, really don't like Nintendo at all. But they do make the occasional game that I really enjoy. Paper Mario, Luigi's Mansion, Pikmin. Zelda, sort of, although Zelda Breath of the Wild and Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. I really didn't like. It's not Zelda to me. It's a rather boring open world game. Especially Breath of the Wild. Massive, humongous, empty open world. Which people thought was the second coming of Jesus for some reason. But anyway, this game is good. Not as good as the first game. 